Let's take you to Kumase, where traders who own shops at various markets in Kumase have up to two weeks to move or forfeit them. City Mayor Osei Isibe Entry says such tendencies of traders not to move into their shops are hampering efforts to rid the metropolis of unauthorized structures. He gave the order after a tour of selected market centers on Thursday. Love FM's Kwesi Debra reports. 299 stalls acquired by traders. Either remains empty or serve as restrooms for owners. A Junasa market built four years ago has over 200 shops deserted, while their owners prefer to sell on the streets. Traders here are worried about low sales. They say it's gradually sinking their business. <laughs> If all the traders come, we'll be happy to trade. And city authorities can start looking at establishing a lorry station here. Else you would bring the goods, but none will buy. At Patase, Adumenu, race calls and Bantama food markets, the situation is worse as indicated by city authorities. It is for people to go. And if this message gets to the public, the public will rush in their numbers. You have been here, so now you are, you are witnesses. You can also be our advocates to let the public know that some people have taken shops and for four years they've not used it and they've moved onto the pavement. And now here, our queen mothers are also crying foul that if you don't chase them from the street, they are also coming back. So should we wait for all those who are selling at the central market to also come to the street? But my hene Bafo Mankweti at the SIF wouldn't take any excuses, insisting the measure will restore Kumasi to its glorious path. So he is saying that the state that you know, Kumasi finds itself now. If he really sits down, what is going to happen is that Kumasi is going to turn into a place that you can't control anymore. So because of that, he's taking this initiative. This is not about politicians. This is about Nanano. Nanano, we, 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 we don't need votes to stay where we are. We are only saying that Kumasi belongs to us. And therefore, whatever that we have to do to make Kumasi what it used to be, we have to do it. And that is what we are doing. Though most of the market centers are refurbished, the Fiasewa Kubi market, for instance, has challenges with amenities. Traders say it's making their stay there difficult. We don't have Trotro yet. That brings people. So normally when we are coming, sometimes we, all, we both drop into this place. And when we are going to the same thing. The clock is ticking for traders at unauthorized sites. But it won't be the first time. Whether it will be the last, only time will tell. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi Debra. Let's take you back to the Adabraka Polyclinic where Ifwa Evans Shinri is on standby. Ifwa, what's the current situation there? We understand some parents had to leave because they did not raise the 270 Ghana cities to buy the vaccines for H1N1 and meningitis. Right, um, so we'll go back to Ifwa Evans Shinri now. Let me just a bit of background the Ghana Health Service and the Ministry of Education procured vaccines uh, for H1N1. These vaccines were administered for free at Kumasi Academy where there was a confirmed H1N1 outbreak last year before these students vacated. Uh, we understand at the time we were waiting on more vaccines for meningitis. Well, uh, they, we were told that they may not need a meningitis vaccination program at all because of the number of cases that had been reported. Uh, and so we are trying to get more information on what is happening at Adabraka Polyclinic and the response from the health authorities. But let's move on now uh, because Ghana Immigration Service has vigorously defended the 50 Ghana City cost of application forms for entry into the service. Now, Public Relations Offshore, the service DSI Michael Amwakwata explains the charges to cover the cleaning of recruitment venues and other costs associated with the process. 
there has been a huge public outcry at the long winding queues seen as regional offices of the service. 84,637 people aged between 22 and 27 applied for the 500 vacancies in the, the immigration service. The SI Mwakata says the money charged from these people are justified. Yeah, you see, we, we were given approval to recruit 500 people into the service. That was somewhere in November last year. Mm. And you know we are in a democratic dispensation. Mm. We can't do this behind the uh, screens. Mm. So what we did was to advertise, giving the requirements for the process, especially for the first phase, mm. which was the purchase of the e-voucher mm. and online application. The feedback we had was that 84,000 84, purchased the e-voucher. Mm. 84,000 purchased the e-voucher and won. Not all of them uh, applied online. Mm. Some bought it and they never applied. But out of those who applied online, mm. we had 47 mm. being 47,000 being qualified. Mm. Because the system is such that immediately you, you click the submit button of your completed form. It tells you within six seconds whether you are qualified or not qualified. Out of that, we have 47,000. And those are the people that we sent SMS yesterday to come for the screening and today for the, the aptitude test. Mm. So if, even for that figure, I mean, there are a lot of people, I mean, some people are already doing calculations on social media. They say if you have 84,000 people purchasing forms for 50 Ghana cities, you've made about 4.2 million Ghana cities. And they're questioning where, you know, those monies will be going to. You, you, you have some answers for that? Yes, I have quite some answers. Mm. You see, for each center across the 10 regions of Ghana, mm. we are renting the venues. Mm. We are paying money to conduct the exercises. Mm. We've rented or hired ambulances across mm. the regions. We're paying for that. And for the various venues too, we refresh the applicants, mm. at least with some chilled water. Mm. And even Zoom Lion and other uh, 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 um, sanitary uh, institutions to clean up the places that we are holding. And all this is about money. Mm. So it is going to it. After the second phase, when we enter into a third phase, medical screening uh, and all that, we will also have to pay for the scripts. I don't know the number, the numbers that will qualify after the aptitude test, but to get people to mark, to pay for venues, for the marketing and all that. Mm. So it's not just like we've made money out of it, but we're going to spend and even maybe go into our own coffers mm. to support the process. So the 4.2 million Ghana cities will cater for all these things you're talking about? I haven't done the calculation, mm. but... You're still watching Joy News today. My name is Daniel Dazi. We take you now to the Adabraka Polyclinic where Ifwa evans Chinri is standing by. Ifwa, what can you report? Okay, Daniel, I got here at around 10 a.m. and uh, when we got here, there were some parents at the vaccination center who wanted to vaccinate their children against the meningitis. You know that it has been on high demand. That is, uh, the, the flu shot has been on high demand because school authorities have asked parents to vaccinate their children because of the various diseases that they contract when they go to school. But here, when they got here, they were asked to pay 250 Ghana cities for the H1N1 shot and uh, 20 cities for meningitis. And some of the parents who couldn't afford uh, just walked away while some others decided to stay and argue, demanding explanation as to why they have to pay such a huge amount of money. You know, but the, some of the workers here explained to me that uh, the vaccination, that is the H1N1 shot that came in, uh, were brought in by government and was sent to um, Kumasi Academy. And so this one that has come in now was brought in by um, one of the private uh, licensed pharmaceutical um, agencies. So it means that if you need it, you have to pay for it uh, to be given to you. So that is the confusion here now. People don't understand why they have to pay for such a huge amount of money for the H1N1 shot. So if we're, how, about how many parents, well, about how many people have been served since you got there today? Okay, I got here, when I got here at 10 a.m., um, there were 
over 10 parents here and uh, some of them that I spoke with, I mean they were a little hesitant to speak to us on camera, but those I spoke with um, off camera say that um, they, they cannot afford that, that amount of money so they had to walk away. Some decided to stay and argue. They demanded explanations as to why they have to pay such, such an amount. Authorities have refused to speak to us and some of the workers, like I told you earlier, they were hesitant to speak to us on camera. So, so that is what is happening here. But the, there are some of the parents still in there at the vaccination centre waiting to get the H1N1 shot uh, for, for their children. Now, I'm curious, this centre is known, is recognised by the Ghana Health Service as a vaccination centre. Um, do we know if the hospital told the relevant authorities before carrying out this vaccination or they took this decision on their own arbitrarily? Well, Daniel, like I told you earlier, they, well, I had to, you know, try to get a, a few answers from them. They, they have refused to speak. Uh, they, they don't want to give me details of exactly what, what is happening. But like I told you earlier, uh, you, you have to, if you need that shot, you have to um, call the um, Ernest Chemist. Uh, they are the, the licensed, the private licensed pharmaceutical company that brought in the H1N1. You have to call them and pay for it before it's, it's, it's given to you. So that's what most of the health facilities do. They have to call and get the shot and, and, and sell it to, to parents and two wants to get it for their children. Right, thank you very much, Ifwa Evan Shinri, for that report. That was Ifwa Evan Shinri at the Adabraka Polyclinic. Uh, we'll be doing our best to get a response from the Ghana Health Service, but um, our sources, they have been telling us, like Ifwa just reported, similar to what Ifwa just reported there, that the only official vaccines for, for H1N1 from the Ghana Health Service and the Ministry of Health were administered as Kumasi Academy last year. And since then, the government has not seen it necessary to administer any such vaccines. And, and the information I got actually is that the H1N1 vaccines are quite specialized and they are not even administered on such a large scale in the first place. But we're trying to get some more clarification as to how a public institution was able um, to get these vaccines and administer them. What impression is being given to these parents. That will be done um, before the day is out. Now, um, let's move on back to Parliament and hear from Defence Minister Dominic Nitewo, who says it will be good for a bipartisan investigation into the allegations of people paying $100,000 to sit close to the President. Let's hear Dominic Nitewo. The group has not denied that they didn't organise it. The ministry has not denied that they did not collaborate with the group. The ministry has not denied that monies were collected. What the ministry said, which all of us, which is public knowledge to all of us, is that uh, because of transparency, they insisted that whatever resources that were picked for that organization or the program should be lodged in an account controlled by the ministry. That's why the minority has a concern that for such an activity, then. Um, Parliament should have approved it as a, a fee charge, you know, or, or a charge, and and so there's the breach of the law. One that I, I think that the minority is is very far from that. I, the fees and charges are captured in law, and the fees and charges that are there are specific items that are there. So, for example, you have rule tools. You have this, you have hotel fees. So it's captured in law. Anything that is not captured in law, it is not the duty of parliament to say that uh, we should charge fees and charges by parliament. No, that is not, that's not true. In Ghana, there's always the, this, whether MPP or NDC, there's always been collaboration between the private sector and government agencies to support the work of, of governors. In fact, under the NDC, if you remember, under Youth and Sports Ministry, individuals helped lift black stars. They, they mobilized fans lift, and lifted the, the footballers and black stars to go to several places. They lifted supporters to go to several places. In fact, this organization we are talking about, under the NDC, has collaborated with government and charged similar fees to be able to, to, to assist in uh, organizing. I remember uh, the homecoming events that people do. <laughs> government does not foot the whole bill. In fact, even the cathedral, if you remember the cathedral payments, government is not footing the whole bill. We are raising funds. If you remember the issue of the celebration of Ghana as 60, 
for example, private support. <laughs> private support came in. So I'm, it's not something that is new at all. So I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that anybody will want to waste our time to, to do it. It's, 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 it's pure politicking, and I think that it's not, it's not good for us. We're we are misusing the constitution. We're misusing the um, privileges that are there as MPs, and we're wasting everybody's time. I don't think that is, is, is good enough. But for us... Is this the same stand that you held a few no, years ago? No, I, I, I thought that uh, any good speaker would allow whatever the minority should have to move the motion, listen to the people. Unlike what Duaja who did, I believe that I'm appealing to this speaker to allow them to move the motion. Let's listen to them. You remember the two motions that were supposed to be moved, one by me and the other by the minority leader himself then, who is now majority leader. I moved the Merchant Bank motion. I was supposed to move it. The speaker would not even allow you to move the motion. Unfortunate as it is, and I thought that the people of Ghana were outraged. The same thing with the Kanazui issue, the, bus, the fourth matter. The minority leader himself then, now majority leader, was supposed to move the motion. He, the speaker then would not even allow you to move the motion because he would not even listen to you. And we thought that it was unethical, it was bad. So I think, So you still hold that same position I, I today? Think, and, I hold that position that okay, and allow then, the people to move the motion, listen to why they have called parliament, and take a decision on it. Okay, but your expectation is that eventually it should be shut down and no probe should happen, even after they are, I, are allow the chance I, and I, listen I, to I think that if there is... If, if parliament deems that they want to come to the bottom of that matter, I, I'm, I'm clear in my mind that there is nothing untoward. And so if you think that there's nothing untoward, allow the probe to go on. That's my view, and I've, I won't run away from that view. My view has told me that if you believe you are not hiding anything, allow it to go on, and then come out with the with the facts and let the public decide. Is, is that why you are gathering? Is it, will, will, will your side of the house allow for this? No, the, the I, 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 I don't know what my side of the house will decide, and I don't think that it's about the side of the house. I think it's about parliament. I'm, I'm clear in my mind that parliament. If Parliament is so minded to serve the people of Ghana, Parliament will allow the, whatever they want to do to continue. And let's come to the bottom of it, because if there's nothing to hide, then why are you blocking it? I, that's my view. But you still think it will be a waste of resources? It's a waste, of, a waste of, resources. of time. It's a waste of people's time. It's a waste of resources. It's a waste of everybody's time. I think that it's, it's an unethical thing. Because Dominic Mitzel will be speaking with our uh, Joseph Opoku Gakpo. Let's stay with this issue. And we've been joined on the phones by Joseph again, a man in parliament. Joseph, if you can hear me, uh, whilst you were speaking to the Honorable Dominic Netiwo, we heard the bell ring to call the members of parliament in. Um, what has happened after that? So a number of them have gathered in the house at the moment. The house is almost full. Um, trying a head count, more than 200 of them are present in the chamber as I speak. We are all waiting for the speaker to walk in to get proceedings underway. Uh, but um, the, the house is almost full and the thing hasn't begun yet. The, the, the speaker is here to walk in. Now, Dominic Nitu will give a strong indication of his personal position that he would not mind if the motion is moved and possibly if the investigation is carried out. Is this the sentiment you're getting from the majority? That's what we're gathering, that at the um, majority side, they don't intend uh, blocking the motion that will be moved by Muntaka Mubarak. Um, we, we gather that they are going to allow him, no one would arrest the motion, no one would object to it. The House would eventually go ahead and debate the motion. We would hear from members on both sides. There will be um, closing comments on the issue from both the minority leader, Harun Idrisu, and the majority leader, Osei Men Sabonti. And from what we're gathering, um, when all that is done, the speaker will not exactly set up a new committee to probe this particular issue, but then will refer it to one of the committees of parliament to go ahead and investigate and bring a report back to the House uh, as far as whatever they will find is concerned. And from what we're gathering, it's likely to be the Trade, Industry and Tourism Committee mm. that this particular issue would be referred to for them to probe and bring back a report to the House. So we won't see the setting up of any new committee, but then... Um, a standing committee of the House would eventually look into this and report to the House appropriately. Right. So in, during news desk earlier today, you gave us four options for possible outcomes for today. This falls under which one? And, and so this is a case of the House accepting uh, to probe this particular issue. The, the first option was the Speaker possibly dismissing the motion entirely and saying it won't be looked at. 
the second option, which was that the uh, minority would have thrown in a counter motion and stopped the processes so that then the motion. You mean the majority throwing in a counter motion? Uh, yes, and so that was the possible second option, which we are, we are told now would not happen. Mm. Uh, the third option would then have been um, the majority side allowing and admitting the motion, the House debating it, but then them voting eventually and throwing out the motion, requesting for a parliamentary mm. probe. That as well, from what we gather, will not be the case. And so the fourth option, which is that the House would accept to probe this particular issue, right. is what we gather will be the case, except that no new committee will be established. Okay. The standing committee will be asked to look at it. Right, thank you very much, Joseph Opoku Gapo, for that report from Parliament. And the latest we are hearing from there is that the majority is giving strong indication that they will allow for the motion uh, mo be moved by Muntaka Mubarak to be moved. They will allow for an investigation to be carried out Let into the allegations Let of payments of $100,000 for seats uh, next to the president. Let's move on. You're still watching Joy News today. Let's take this story um, immediately after this. Thanks for staying with us. Now, for a significant number of mobile phone users, the device is mainly for making and receiving phone calls, WhatsApp messaging, and taking photos and videos. For others, though, it is a working tool. In some parts of Ghana, the mobile handset is helping solve some of the biggest challenges facing farmers, such as post-harvest losses and what price to quote for their produce. Justice Beidou has been to the Ashanti Regional Capital, Kumase, to find out how this otherwise simple device is making a big difference. Farming, sometimes a tedious job. But it remains the country's biggest employer, engaging more than half of its over 25 million people. One of the biggest challenges drawing it back through is the lack of transparency for prices of farm produce on the market. Middle-aged Douglas Ajay has been farming vegetables for over a decade now. Besides low market prices, the agriculture he and his colleagues engage in here is mainly rain-fed, making them vulnerable to the weather. Middle women always decide the price we sell our produce. That makes us lose all the money we invest because they cheat us. That is why many young people do not want to farm. This is a problem for us. Hello. More than 26 million of these gadgets are currently in use in Ghana. Call it the mobile revolution that is transforming our lives 360 degrees. They are not just making communications easier. Now, they are also touching one of the most critical backbones of our economy, agriculture. Farmerline, this new tech company, is seeking to take advantage of this, using the mobile phone to reach more farmers with market prices and weather forecasts all in their own dialect. What we seek to do is that we provide this information for the farmer to give him that kind of knowledge. If the middle woman comes, the farmer now knows the prevailing market prices of the various markets and then this will empower him to negotiate for good prices. Farmers do want to apply fertilizer, they want to spray their produce, they want to even do planting, they want to dry their produce. And because they don't know the weather, for, the weather information or the weather updates, this affects them. So Farmerline, through the mobile phone, in their own local languages, 
we send the information to them about what the, uh, the weather will be for a particular day or the next day. This helps the farmer to make preparation, when to apply the fertilizer, when to add um, and dry the produce or even um, spray the farm. Post-harvest losses caused in part by farmers not able to sell their produce alone account for the wastage of more than half of all food crops in Ghana. This new technology may be a game changer. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Kumasi. Still watching Joy News today, now Deputy Minister of Communication George Anda has assured Ghana's smooth migration onto the digital platform will increase many job opportunities in the broadcasting industry. He was speaking at the commissioning of multi-choice Ghana's ultra-modern head office building in Accra. At the ceremony, which was attended by various stakeholders in the industry. For TV lovers, Multi-Choice Ghana has a new headquarters located here at Abilinkpe. It's a magnificent, beautiful building. And the architect of this place, this facility, is right here with me. He's Andrew Pra of Andrew Pra Consult. Welcome to join you, sir. Thank you. Now, this is a very beautiful building, I has, as I have said in my introduction. Tell us more about it, the design, what went into all of that. Thank you. Um, this is a 5,400 square meters of space distributed over three levels. The design on plan is to have a six level development. So this in actual fact is a first phase development. For the basement, we have mainly the warehouse and the staff canteen. We have a gym. We have a training facility within the um, ground, um, the basement level. On the ground floor where we are is the customer service um, area. We have, we have the um, credit control guys also up here. It's a double volume space um, reflecting the business that uh, Multi-Choice does. You can see all the fun loving colors in That's there. That's what I was getting to. I yes. mean, I just That's love right. these That's colors. Right. It's so right. homey. I get here and I see all these flashy lights. With and lights, colors. you know. <laughs> so um, the, the, the hellos up there depict yeah. the, um, the Multi-Choice colors. And okay. I said we wanted to represent the um, fun-loving nature of uh, multi-choice business in this way. So we went for the serpentine um, or meandering shape of a uh, teller area. We have uh, the administrative uh, wing. That's up there. That's right, up there. We have the general manager, accounting department, the West African team, the legal office, the uh, sales and marketing team are all on the first floor. So we are being conscious with our cost in use. We don't want our cost in use to be so high when it comes to energy bills. We control the elevations. When you go to the front, you notice that there are, there's a lot of movement on the front. So the various wings and projections in the front cast interesting shadows on the curtain wall we've used and these curtain walls are double uh, glazed and they are quite a special glass so that uh, we reduce the solar radiation that comes inside. Multi's Choice believes that look, they must have a very comfortable space to give off the best. Teamwork, respect, integrity, motivation. Absolutely. So you see the wall branded, um, bring some amount of good nature to the space. So with this eco-friendly uh, building you have put up for multi-choice, what advice would you give for people who are yet to build private, private homes as well? Because it looks like a lot of things have been done in this building that is very cost-effective based on the explanations you have given me. If I have to build, what are the things I have to look out for to be able to get eco-friendly, to be able to uh, save money as well? I think um, I would first and foremost advise um, prospective property owners to consult professionals when they are designing their homes and offices. Two, they should work with their consultants or professionals because a lot of people assume that um, you probably can just sleep, wake up and put a couple of lines together to get the building you want. It takes more than that. And People should start appreciating the fact that every building is unique in its own way, and uh, that uniqueness to a certain extent is modeled around the owner himself. So it's high time we quit 
if I should say, see Kwame DNA be mommy. I want a house just like Kwame's. Um, I prefer a joyous house. So when people do that beyond a certain point, I mean, you leave your architects with no imagination. Big space here. Huge, huge space. Mine. So. You can actually do a lot here. This is it, multi-choice Ghana, and it was this particular building was put up by Andrew Pra of Andrew Pra Consult. Um, as we told you earlier, you can come around here, have an idea, build a concept for your own structure. For Joy News, my name is Hannah Odami. And Joy News today will take a quick breather, but Emmanuel Abadjiriafi will bring us business. <laughs>